You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time to take a look at what's happening with the papers. All the headlines making the rounds with the help of our guest will unravel what's behind them. I have as guest today, Chris Wandu, the publisher, CKN News. Thank you for joining us on The Breakfast. Thank you very much for having me this morning. All right, we'll start with the Punch newspaper. Let's see what is the big one. TUC Neka Asu Talk Tough. As FG meets Labour today, that's on petrol price, electricity tariff hikes. That's sit on your screen now. Two riders to it. TUC issues seven-day ultimatum, plans nationwide protest beginning September 23. We will convey, convince Congress others on price increase at today's meeting, says federal, says federal government. Okay, um, at the top of the paper, just above the masthead, uh, we have uh, U.S. extends visa ban to Edo Ondo pole offenders. Dangote refinery may not reduce fuel price, says FG. Uh, how Akeoshun saved me. Adeoshun, I beg your pardon. How Adeoshun saved me when I was first ambushed, that's Buratai. Passengers stranded as Arik Waka strike ground airline. And then the scene of the accident, unfortunate scene on the front page of the Punch newspaper. I don't know if you could flip so um, our viewers can see uh, that picture. Not too pleasant though. Train crushes Lagos trader attempting to save son in SUV. Maybe so. Rest in peace. Uh, we also have other headlines here. Ogun orders 40 communities to relocate before flood disaster. Uh, four held for beating policeman to death in Ogun State. Uh, Jehesu paralyzes hospital as health workers protest unpaid allowances. Uh, there are more headlines here, but I'll just bring in um, Mr. Wandu to uh, pick on the big one for you. Yeah, we pick, we pick on the big one, which is the lead. Yeah. Uh, uh, TUC, TUC Neka Asu. Um, it seems to be a season of strike. Uh, and the headworkers, even in a pandemic, even the pandemic situation, um, the headwater uh, workers are already on strike. Um, the university lecturers um, locked up last week, yesterday. Um, then we are not talking about. Um, the TUC NLC meeting with government over electricity and, uh, and the, the government petroleum. seems to think this they can is, change the mind. The government of, has given uh, us the, the impression they'll be able to convince uh, labor um, to understand, quote unquote, the reasons are rational behind the price hikes. Um, but the problem is that Nigerians are going through serious stress, um, very, very serious stress now. Um, coming out of the, we've not even come out of the pandemic. Since March, practically most people have lost their job. Uh, most organizations have closed down. Um, the spending power of the people has really gone down. Um, school is resuming, parents are going to pay school fees. And um, now, now we're having about 100% hike in electricity and that of petrol, which in itself also is going to shoot up so many other since um, the bakers um, gave a warning strike, uh, what I call warning strike, unquote, a few days ago that they're going to increase the price of bread by 50%. So which means that Nigerians are really, really in deep uh, trouble. So uh, let's see how government will be able to convince NLC and TUC and the others about this. But I believe that irrespective of the fact that, yes, we are deregulating the, um, the oil sector, um, I believe that the government could also have held um, taking the uh, labor union into um, Congress and the, into confidence before allowing this to happen. There's even this one on uh, so, Dangote Refinery may not may reduce not, the because there's so much hope that when it comes on it comes stream, that is, yes. from what we're hearing now, it, it might not also. So, he, but let's see how it, it pans out. Um, the only problem is that the only thing that our government listens to is always strike. 
it's only when you give notice of strike or decide to go on strike that the government tends to do what they're supposed to do. Ordinarily, they ought to have done. But if that doesn't happen, they don't seem to listen. But um, let's wait and see how it goes. Uh, in the next few hours, we want to see uh, what the labor and the government have reached on our behalf. On because, our behalf, yes, on indeed, our behalf. very important. Yes, I hope they take a decision yes. that will benefit all. Um, so. th there's something on Edo decides that I missed earlier. Mm. Um, it has Obaseki ask INEC to deploy drones use Z pad. Uh, I think that decision has been uh, cancelled by INEC. The use of Z pad yeah. uh, because of uh, some complication and the volatile situation yeah. in Edo uh, State. Uh, yeah. There's also another one there. Again, NBC warns broadcasters threaten sanctions on reportage. That's yeah. for us. Mm -hmm. And then please deploy 31,000 officers for Edo Golf Poll. Uh, you find details of all of these stories on page 12 of the paper. Uh, yeah. let's, 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 uh, except there's something else you want to talk about. We'll yes, to... um, I'm looking at um, the uh, the ban by the United States. And that's the big one. So <laughs> I might as well just uh, go <laughs> on and go on to the move one. on to the <laughs> nation <laughs> newspaper. Uh, that's the big one there. Yeah. U.S. slams sanctions on top politicians, others. That's it on your screen. Again, the scene of that unfortunate uh, situation in Lagos uh, yesterday. Um, Edo is also on the front page. No room for rigging violence in Edo 31 cops deployed. Conversion of cars for gas fueling begins uh that's another one for you well let's just go ahead and speak on the u.s ban yes uh when the news broke yesterday that the united states of america um, is placing some uh, visa ban on certain politicians um, in four states um it's edo um that's edo and odo um then we have Bayesa and kogi Bayesa and kogi because of the past election and edo and Odo, they are warning them, them this, is going, to this is going to happen. Um, I, I think it's a good way of um, trying to make our politicians play by the rule and, and um, play by the rules of engagement. Um, for me, politics is not a do or die. Politics should be seen as, um, as sports. And in sports, when you say football, when the two teams, when Chelsea and the man you play, and one of the team wins, at the end of it, or you see them embracing themselves, exchanging jerseys and the rest of them, there must be a winner and there must be a loser. That I'll ask you the same question yes. I asked our guest earlier on yeah. the break first, and that's if they, did, they do not give the names of those that have already been banned mm -hmm. uh, from, I mean, visa restriction and yeah. all of that from the previous election that they cited, the yeah. Bielsa and the Kogi state, yeah. um, doesn't it reduce or diminish the strength of that threat uh, to ban further people from, say, um, Edo and Ondo? Well, they have their reason for doing what they do in the United States. And also, don't forget, um, in international politics, there are a lot of things that goes into it. Um, those that are banned know themselves. Uh, so, uh, most of them are not, except it becomes in, in extreme cases uh, when it has to do with terrorism and all those kind of arts that you see them coming out to announce the names. But in the past, they hardly come to um, um, announce such names. They, where they also announce names when it comes to uh, sanctions on countries and the rest of them. But on an individual basis, don't forget what happened during, the, um, during almost before the last election, where the, um, Atiku Abubakar was there that, oh no, he cannot get to the to the United States, I will not go to the United States. And then States. he went to prove and us all he, wrong exactly. that he could go. Yes, and they did. So uh, most of them, they are not, there's a more diplomatic way of doing that. I'm sure they must have passed that to the Federal Ministry of um, Foreign Affairs and the relevant authorities and uh, as well as Nigerian security agencies, they know. Uh, but we as Nigerians, we always want to know, you know, um, because by then they name you and probably, quote unquote, shame you. The tendency is for others to not engage in that. Because but when you keep it, somebody might just say, I'm not going to the US in the next five years, but don't know that he has been banned from coming to the US, you, if you understand what I'm trying to say. So, but they, I, have, I think there are more diplomatic ways of going about it, and that's what they're trying to do under okay. the circumstances. Uh, we're still looking at the Edo election because that seems to be yes, kind of the, closest yes, on everybody's yes, mind Edo, now. Yes. Uh, that's uh, this day newspaper. Yes. Okay. It says, Will of the people shall prevail in. Edo, Ineka shows critics, that's it on your screen, suspends use of z -pad for accreditation, Abdul Salami Kuka to superintend peace accord today, and then of course the deployment of policemen and the visa ban captured underneath that screamer. 
Above the masthead, we have CBN releases framework for implementation of $2 billion solar project. Uh, let's go back to that assurance um, by INEC, the big one, before we go look at other headlines. What's yes, your yeah. Um, INEC seems to be ready. Um, I like the assurances, um, but I'm not over optimistic um, because um, several times in the past, INEC has promised and failed in certain, in certain uh, periods. Uh, what about the security agencies? I mean, yes, the IG is speaking really tough. Yeah, it's speaking tough. 31,000 policemen to be deployed, but we also also almost a similar number of policemen deployed to Kogi State during the last election. It was all happened. People were killed. Um, ballots, um, um, voting centers and uh, ballot buses were snatched and smashed and rest of them. A lot of people couldn't come out to vote. Those that voted couldn't even vote. The resource sheet and rest of them. So the politicians have a way of doing these things. And um, where they, they, they go to areas where they think um, <laughs> their opponents um, may be winning and go there and disrupt and at the end of it, or if, and if you cannot uh, get a result from that, INEC cannot uh, announce. So whatever INEC, the sources of, or the wise of INEC sources um, at the pool also depends on, the, um, on other factors, uh, chiefly um, security issues. Um, I hope that the number of um, policemen being de uh, deployed to a door will be able to deter, uh, would be troublemakers. Um, but I also want to see some military presence. It, it is key. Uh, our people don't. We are now problem. used to military. We're, they are not we're, ideally. They are not supposed to be in situations well, like that is this. What we're the police and other, other in other clients, people just walk, go to the office <laughs> during break hour. Just walk um, across, vote, and go back to the offices. But here we close market, we close road, we place uh, curfew, all sorts. At the end of it, all, we still don't get it right. Um, but the whole my own challenge here is that I hope at the end of it all. I neg the will of the people will, will come, be, to, come play. to play. Okay, uh, still talking um, elections, but uh, let's talk about uh, security yeah. of it. I think I'll skip that headline. Let's go to another one. Gunmen kill two FRSC personnel, abduct 10 others in Nasarawa. That's yeah. talking security now. Uh, that is also captured on Business Day. Uh, Business Day has poverty constitutes biggest security threat to Nigerians. I want you, I mean, we've had uh, cases in recent times of kidnapping. Uh, there was one in Delta State. I'm not sure now mm. um, if the lady has been uh, reunited mm. with her family. Mm. You hear it almost on a daily basis. An undergraduate kidnapped here, ransom mm. paid, mm. more demanded, mm. and then we have this scenario. Mm. Now, the business day is saying poverty is constituting to this increase. Um, in threat in crime. Yes, uh, before going to that, let me first of all commiserate with the co-marshal of the Federal Road Safety, um, Dr. Buboye Oyeyemi, on the death of um, two um, road safety officers. Um, it's touchy to me because I'm involved with um, road safety issues. I'm the coordinator of it's the... It's touchy to all Nigerians. Yes, yes. I, I'm the coordinator of the Federal Road Safety Celebrity Special Marshal in Nigeria. So I know uh, the impact of that. And now 10 of those officers have been kidnapped. Uh, nobody knows where they are presently. Um, efforts have been made um, to, um, to get them released. Uh, but they, that goes to show the, the level uh, of insecurity in the land. And um, something must give. Uh, and we must start making sure that Nigerians, irrespective of where they live, um, are safe. Um, talking about poverty, um, causing insecurity and the rest of course, uh, a, a hungry man is an angry man, uh, but that does not necessarily mean that a lot of people that um, are poor, but they, they don't go into cl crimes. So I personally don't, I don't buy that. The fact that you're poor doesn't make that you must be a criminal. If not, then <laughs> practically seven out of ten Nigerians uh, might be criminals. So it's inbuilt. Some people just decide that they want to be criminals. There are some people that are very, very rich and also into criminality. These so-called uh, kidnappers and the rest of them, some of them raking millions and millions on a daily basis from people. And they don't forget... Uh, our well, man. If it is not addressed, yeah, I so mean, I think this is more like a projection. It constitutes the biggest security threat. It does. It does. I agree. But the fact, what I'm trying to say in a sense is that we should not hang it. It's a societal issue. It's not just uh, about poverty. It is we losing our value. People, people no longer value life. 
People no longer value their names. People prefer all they are interested in, in making money, whatever. And nobody cares to ask you how you made your money. Once you can be able to bring that money and spread around, people just, you see musicians and the rest of them singing your praise, irrespective of how you get the money and the rest of them. So uh, it is a societal issue, and I believe our religious leaders also have a lot to play in this. The family, parents have a lot to play. Then people engaging in peer groups, where people, at times, they have a say in my place that, they say the goat we know they eat yam. Me begin follow the one with the eat yam. Me go begin the chop yam, and that is <laughs> those are the kind of things that happen. So I I believe that uh, we have a lot of problem. It's a time bomb waiting to explode. I hope it doesn't explode. I pray we so have much. the Guardian and newspaper nest for review. Um, energy pipelines damaged nine thousand four hundred and twenty times in five years. Uh, that's uh, the big one here. Energy pipelines damaged 9,420 times in five years. Cost of repairs set to hit 1 trillion naira. Why pipeline vandalism persists? INEC, please go tough. Four days to Edo election. A couple of writers uh, underneath that story for you. Uh, TUC gives seven-day strike notice over electricity fuel price hike. NJC NBA insists on... Beme as Cross River Chief Judge. Ademi, we removed Akintoye because he cannot lead Yoruba anywhere. That's uh, politics inside the Guardian newspaper. Um, um, let me make your pick. Yes, um, the level of um, pipeline vandalism is, um, is very alarming. And um, I've just continued to wonder why we are spending so much money, billions of naira, in security, in providing security for the pipelines, because I know that NMPC um, and the Ministry of Petroleum spent billions and billions of naira uh, in protecting, in getting security agencies, certain uh, private security agencies to man um, those. Things. And that is the challenge we are having, and um, where people criminality takes all sorts of manner of um, dimension. Um, still on the issue we are just talking about, greed, uh, making people trying to make money. Uh, out of where national uh, uh, national resources, um, but that would be. Uh, is there any? Is, can't we find any other way of uh, moving those products than through the pipeline? I'm just I'm just taking. Uh, and come to think of it, even within Lagos area, if you go to some of those suburbs, you see that people are now building houses very close to the yeah, pipeline. Yeah, we had that explosion. You know that explosion we had, yes. So um, I think and the NMPC should make sure that they find a much better and more secure way of putting these pipelines that will not easily lead to vandalization um, by miscreants and people who want to make uh, money out of it. Um, but it, it's very alarming. We'll continue Sincerely. to hope for the best in this country. And conversations like this hopefully uh, will engender the right change I in agree. attitude. I hope so too. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Wandu, for coming Thank on The very, Breakfast. Thank you very much for having me. Have a blessed day. You too.